Tracy with the Limelight Pet Project, and today we're here with Holly and with Austin from Wamal. And Austin, would you be able to tell us a little bit about who's for adoption today? Um, you are um, Wamal's adoption coordinator, correct? Foster. I'm, I'm one of the foster coordinators. I'm the foster newest coordinator. So, um, and and, and you have, um, you've been a foster parent for COA, the, the Melamute. Yes, I have. So what I'm here to talk about today is COA. We've got other dogs for people that are interested and they're all wonderful and awesome. Um, COA, COA came in our rescue a couple months ago. He had been surrendered uh, to a humane society. I don't know why. Um, he is a Malamute, true and true but his temperament is more like one of the easiest dogs you've ever worked with in your life, um, the lab. Um, so he came into our rescue. He had a couple of issues. He had um, some cracked teeth or a cracked tooth, and he has discoid lupus. Um, both of those have really gone against him. People have gone, ooh, I don't want a dog that, that I have to spend extra time with. I guess. I, I'm not sure. It scares people, and it shouldn't. Uh, the the teeth we've had fixed, they were sealed. They're fine. Um, when you take your dog in for his annual vet checkup, they can check those, and they just reseal them. And actually, now that it's done, it's easy. It's a, like a preventative. Um, as far as a lupus, he's got an extremely mild case that is it's, it's on the skin. It's not as internal. It's not a systemic lupus. It's discoid, it's just on his skin, predominantly on his nose. He takes a few supplements. The supplements to me are in the brainer. Um, you know, the, so he's got lupus, he shouldn't be in the sun, but it's it's a mild case. And we live in Washington state, it's always cloudy. We're in the Northwest, it's cloudy up here. And the supplements he needs, to me it's a no brainer. My dogs, I've got them on supplements. I want them to live a long time. He takes a vitamin E, a fatty acid and a niacin variant mm -hmm. and check. There's no, oh my gosh, he's got a lesion. He's a beautiful dog. Um, his temperament's great. He loves anything that you love. If, mm -hmm. if you are his forever home, whoever out there that is going to be his forever home, this dog wants to please you. That's, that's the overwhelming message I would get from Koa is he wants to be that dog. He wants to be your companion. And he loves jogging. He loves people that I, I don't like walking. I don't like, but I go on a slow walk, slow, short walk, and he's happy with that. And there's been other that have been out running with him, and he loves jogging. He's, he really is so adaptable. He has a whole host of basic commands. He loves to play fetch. He, when he was with me, he didn't chew up anything. He was, he was awesome in that regard. We we're talking his, his eyes he, he's he's got he's got a soul he's you know he loves watching tv that's the thing with malamutes malamutes are are kind of a hassle but they um they're so their personalities are so rich and this guy's got the personality without the hassle and like even walking him like i said walk he doesn't pull he, he'll keep the, the the leash tight he'll you know go to the bounds of what he can but he doesn't pull your arm he doesn't pull you over and the thing that I noticed with him is, is you know, he's like any animal, especially when he doesn't when he doesn't know the rules of the house. When he starts bonding with you and he bonds really fast, he, he wants to please. So he starts learning and he learns the rules because he wants to please. Now, Austin, um, Koa is a large dog, um, almost 90 pounds. Um, he's, he's lanky. I met him on Sunday when I did his photos and he's lanky. Um, and strong and muscular. And if it wasn't for the pink on his nose, I would not know that he had any issues whatsoever. Now, would you recommend that if like on a sunny day, would you recommend that someone put um, a, a sunblock on his nose to help, hit, to help protect his nose? And if he does end up in a lupus flare, and I'm doing quote unquote lupus flare, do you know what that looks like? So, Discoid lupus is something that most vets are aware of. Um, and a flare-up would literally be like a, like a, you would see like a skin ulcer or a lesion type thing. But everyone that's 
his lupus is so mild that people are debating, is it a snow nose or is it discoid lupus? It's very mild. Um, if he was my dog, I'd absolutely give him the supplements. He's responding well to him. You know, the diagnosis of discoid lupus was, was, it was clear, but every vet said it's very minor. So they do make topical uh, sun blockers, UV blockers for, for dogs. You do not want to put a human UV blocker or sun blocker on there. Lick. Um, as far as the necessity of it, I've been around him and medically fostered him. Um, he does let you manipulate his gums. He does take his supplements well. We, I throw him in some liverwurst and he just gobbles them down, doesn't even think twice, and he's happy. Um, he's not like with the discoid lupus, it could present itself, it presents itself with dead skin cells, like in the nose or in the pads of the feet. And so he doesn't have anything on the pads of his feet or like in your, at the very edge of your eyelid, you can get stuff. He doesn't have any of that. It's just, it's just a very minor bit of his nose. And so I don't think, I think that people have been focusing on lupus without needing the actual dog. Yeah. And I think even a dog that had a bad case of lupus or a bad case of anything, it, it deserves a chance. Absolutely. And I think people need to give it chance. People want to go get a puppy and puppies pick their stuff up and they're managed and you have to teach them everything. This guy is ready to go and he bonds super fast. I um, In fact, that's my partner and I, that's all we, that's all we get now. We get older dogs that, because they want to bond too. People think that you have to have a pup to have that bond and you don't. And, and he is young enough at three. He's going to have 10 to 13, 14 years with these supplements. I don't know, but I know supplements help them go longer and faster and have more viability. Mm -hmm. So the lupus people shouldn't be focused on. They should be focused on a great dog that, great, you got to give them supplements now. Big deal. You know, he's yeah. going to have a longevity. Um, and he's perfect. I mean, that the one key underlying thing I, I noticed with Co is he wants to please, and because of that, he's easily corrected, and he's easy to keep on track. And I didn't have him tearing up everything. My Malia was, like I said, sixteen years, almost sixteen years old when she died, and it was like a full time job with her. And and Koa, Koa is like he's like a vacation. He, he's a he's a for some point an easygoing dog, but a northern breed. He's the one. He definitely now, has. Following up on that. Sorry. Oh. That's okay. What were you going to say, Holly? I was just going to say, um, I spent an hour and a half with Koa, only an hour and a half, my husband and I, and he definitely seems to prefer the company of males over the company of females. Um, but I did have treats in my pocket, so occasionally he'd come over and see me. But the, the thing that I noticed most about him is that he loves to play fetch, which is not a Malamute thing at all. I don't know many Malamutes that play fetch, but Koa had a ball about this big. It was not a normal size <laughs> tennis ball, it was a larger tennis ball. He loved that thing. We tried to trade toys with him. We tried to give him a treat for the ball. He would put the ball down, but that was the ball he wanted. And him and Tony played for an hour and a half. They played fetch with this ball. And it was just so wonderful to watch this dog have so much fun with Tony. And he was carefree and he, he never made a peep. He never made any noise. There was no barking, there was no yelling, there was no howling. He was just happy to be where he is. And he has the most amazing eyes. Oh my gosh, Austin. His, I don't know, I don't know how this dog didn't get spoiled rotten by you or I, I, he must get everything that he wants because his eyes are something. He's amazing. Everyone mm -hmm. that everyone interacted with him loves him. Everyone. And there hasn't been anything we're recommending he's a dog only home, but I'm just amazed at how well he wants to please and how well he listens. He, he's someone's companion, someone out there that's looking. He's... Now, when we were talking before, Austin, you described Koa as a unicorn because Koa is a northern breed, which Holly and Marika with Limelight, they are our northern breed experts. I am definitely a Northern breed novice. And when we've worked with Northern breeds before, my take on it has been, they look at me, they size me up and they go, she doesn't know what she's doing. And I, and I see them say that and I go, uh oh, they know that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a, I'm a lab, a lab owner. That's my level of uh, um, expertise. Uh, I'm, I'm better with the easy dogs, but 
Koa sounds like he's a lot more accommodating. Um, do you think that he would be a great dog for somebody that loves Northern breeds, but needs a dog that's gonna take it a little bit easier on them? Maybe reserve judgment when they don't know what they're doing? <laughs> Absolutely. My, my opinion of Koa, uh, our 16 year old Mal is what got us involved with War Mal. And we, I didn't have any clue how difficult Malamutes were. And they, they're like, they're like a person with cute, they're like a cute teddy bear person. They have their own personality through and through and they do what they want to do. And usually it's not what you want them doing. And Koa, Koa's got that cute personality. He's cuddly and he pays attention and he does what you want him to do. He wants, he wants your love, I think. I, I would say that he wants your love. So he's not your average Malamute. He's, he's a really good dog. Um, yeah, he seems, so. he seems to thrive on approval, where most Malamutes could care less if you approve of what they're doing or not. Um, but Koa seems to thrive on that approval. Yes, I bet you've done a good job, Koa. And he's just like, yeah, it's okay. This is good. I'll do more of that. Yeah, I, yeah. Most, like my Malamute, most, a lot of Malamutes, food is their motivating factor. I won't do it unless you have something good for me. And Koa is not treat motivated at all. Um, he likes treat sometimes, but his overall thing is companionship and being, you know, interactive with you. And that does make him unique, in, in, in my opinion, as far as Malamutes go. Um, so he, Malamutes are, are a wild breed. They're one of the older wild breeds out there. Um, yeah, they are one of the most ancient breeds and that's where a lot of people struggle because with the derived breeds that we have, the breeds that have been created within the last um, several hundred years, most of them during the Victorian era, those breeds were specifically um, bred to uh, comply with people. And the more ancient breeds, they have their opinions and they're very smart and they're probably three steps ahead of you half the time. That's well said. I, that's well said. I, the only thing I'd add to it, and it's not even part of that, is that I know a lot of people have a, a soft spot for veterans or uh, service dogs. And, and the Malamute, I want to add this, was the original service dog, World War I, World War II. They were almost, it's a fact, they were almost, uh, almost kind of went uh, extinct. They were like, there was a one line of them was almost like filled out to like 36 and they were packing supplies to the front line and stuff. And people don't realize that they think it's just a, so they're a working dog and they're a wild dog. And, and yeah, the, in nature, they spend their lives out in the harsh conditions and the cold and everything. So they're kind of like, like I am when I come in from like a month in the mountains or something. I gotta, you know, get settled back in and learn my way around the civilized world. So. <laughs> That's a very good way to put it. <laughs> yes, they are the original working breed. That's for sure. And do you think that Koa could learn to pull a sled if he was given the opportunity? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He he definitely had that pushed. Um, he, I think Koa. He he's the unicorn. I think. He wants to please, so if someone truly wants to open their heart and, and take him in their home, I think that he will be able to be trained into the dog. You don't have to get a puppy with Koa. Yeah. Koa is that, that dog that's almost ready to go, and he's got such a life, long life ahead of him. Yeah. And, yeah, if someone wants to get him into to, to doing, like, snow mushing or, yeah. or whatever, even, you know, we've got people that are volunteers that are adopters that, They'll get out there on their bicycle and let them pull them along with that. I don't think I would do that, but I think would do that. <laughs> I think Co would be totally adaptable with that. So. Well, there is a sport, um, bike joring, where you uh, race with your dog attached to your bike. Um, and it's a really yeah. interesting sport. It's not something I would do. Um, I would get, yeah, I'm very accident prone. Um, but I also <laughs> imagine with Co's personality, he would probably like a job and would probably thrive as some kind of therapy dog or service dog. Absolutely. I absolutely agree hundred percent. I am um, nice with everyone. I, you know, children, I don't know about, I know the children next door, he, you know, 
we're, we're adopting now as a dog only home or yeah, to a dog only home, um, single dog. But I just can't say enough with what I saw and everyone else is seeing it too. Everyone's seeing it. This dog is adaptable. And I think with love, true love, he wants to respond in turn and he will seen it. And, and so he's that unicorn in the sense that most Malamutes can't do that. Most Malamutes stuck in their trickle ways and you got to work around that. And so he's a great dog. It's just people don't understand the lupus aspect of it. And it's so mild, it's so minuscule for this animal. It's, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a factor. Well, you hear a word like lupus and you think that that can be scary, but with the lupus that he has, it sounds like it's easily treated and it's not going to limit him in any any way. And other than needing to be, at least at first, the only pet in the household, is there anything else that's making it harder for him to get adopted? I mean, he sounds like you said, like a unicorn. It, I, I really think you have, like, I wanna give an analogy here with like my German Shepherd. Uh, German Shepherds are, are prone to pancreatitis. And so uh, there's a lot of dogs that are prone to pancreatitis and different little things. And, you know, Koa, it's the lupus. People are scared of that. Like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. And it's, 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 it's a no brainer. It shouldn't even be a part of the issue. Um, with my shepherd, we have to give him steroids here and there. We have to give him antibiotics here and there because of his pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. Koa so far has been doing excellent with just the supplements. It's so mild, it, it, it's not even presentable almost. Um, he's that's how it's presentable is he's got it kind of looks like a snow nose and that's it so if he was going to get any kind of lesion it would be right there on his nose mm -hmm. and he hasn't so it shouldn't be a focus point but it, in disclosure you have to say hey this dog needs a little extra and needs some supplements but compared to a, an average dog with average dog issues it's, it's no more it's no more than an average dog yeah, it's not like his hips are bad or his elbows are bad or his shoulders are bad. He's just got a little bit of a skin condition that can be easily controlled with supplements for now and doesn't seem to present any issues in the future. He, he reminds me of, uh, was that maybe What About Marley or Marley? The, the Owen Wilson, I think. What was he, it? Oh, What's oh. Um, Marley and Me. Marley and me. Mm -hmm. I didn't read me. or see that movie because I heard it was sad. Uh, but, it was sad. The, the guy. Go ahead. Uh, but but I can see what you mean from from what I know about it. Marley and me was about a dog. The guy loved. The, the dog was his like everything. And Koa is going to be that dog for somebody. And so the reason I brought that up is that dog. That dog. You you're going to do your best to make sure they're around. And so his supplements to me are just water under the bridge. You're going to want this dog to be around. Whoever adopts him, he's going to want him to be around and they're going to see it. So. And those of us that have pets, I mean, um, supplements or medications, that's just, it goes with the territory with having, mm -hmm. having a pet, you give them whatever they need to help them thrive. Um, it sounds like Koa is so adaptable. How would you, how do you think he would describe his perfect day from start to end if he got to decide what, what Koa is doing today? Well, as far as um, matching him with someone, Koa's perfect day is love. He wants to be, he wants to please someone. So I don't want to put him in a box though. He needs someone that's active and running. He needs someone that's docile and not, or he needs someone to play fetch with him. Everything I experienced with Koa is he wants that love. That's what he wants. His perfect day is getting that love and being included. Um, as we've seen with volunteers, he's great with running, jogging. He's great with playing playing ball, fetch. That's It is unusual for a Melanie. Yep. Uh, he's, great with, he's great with just relaxing and watching TV. Um, so his perfect day is a day where he's got, he's in his forever home and he's got that person that loves him. Well, Holly, did you have any other questions for Austin? I know you got to meet Koa. I'm kind of yeah. wishing that <laughs> I got to meet him too. <laughs> I did. I spent uh, an hour and a half with Koa rolling in the mud because it was raining. Um, and I take all my photographs laying on my stomach. Um, and 
this this dog was amazing. He 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 is probably the best Malamute I have met, and I have met a lot of Malamutes. Um, but he's just so in tune with people, and he's in tune with the dogs that were around him in the kennel. Um, he'd go over to the fence and he'd he'd say hi. He'd investigate, but then he'd turn right around and come back with the ball. So there was there was no um, tension at the fence, even though you know some of the other dogs were like, "Hey, I want to talk to you." Ko was like, "Nah." He just kind of wandered away. Um, I really didn't. I I saw potential in this dog. That's what I saw was so much potential for this dog to do so many good things in the world and just be that companion for someone that is really looking for a dog that will bond with them. Um, because mm -hmm. he's so intuitive with, with the people that are around him and he seems to adapt his energy level based on who's coming or who's going or who he's playing with. That's, that's yeah. his energy level. When um, one of the, I think it was Julie came in, um, he knew that she was high energy. So he just ran right over to her and he like kind of threw himself at her and she threw herself at him and they kind of like had this little love fest, but he never once intruded in my space. Um, and I was in a very vulnerable position being on the ground. He never once intruded on my space or tried to run over me or tried to tackle me. He was very respectful. So like I said, I see potential in this dog and he is going to make a wonderful companion for someone. I don't, I don't have enough good words to say about him. That's awesome. Now, Austin, if somebody sees this segment and they think I am ready to adopt a unicorn, um, how do they reach out to Walmart? What's your email address and your website? And then what are the protocols that you've had in place for COVID? So email address, it's Walmart, Walmart.com. And our website is Walmart.com. It's W-A-M-A-L.com. And there you'll actually, there's a tab that'll say adopt. And most importantly on our adopt tab is we go over the common issue with Malamutes because we want people to be aware of the breed. And I think Koa is kind of exempt from a lot of those, um, the unicorn. As far as what we're doing with COVID, we're of course masking. Uh, we're also doing a lot of Zoom, uh, teleconferencing. Um, if, you, if you're interested in Koa or any of our other dogs, whether you want to adopt, foster, or volunteer, which we could use all three, um, just go on to our website. And under that tab, adopt, there's actually an application for adoption. There's also a foster application on the website as well, and a volunteer application. Uh, and there are other dogs, and they're all great dogs. So I would definitely go in there and take a look, fill out an application, let it get back to you. And uh, we do try, we do have a, a questionnaire to try and properly place a dog in a home that will work long term. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I, I've said, you know, come out, meet the dogs. Yeah. Schedule them and come out and meet them because you never know. You, you may find that's that's what this is about. It's, it's placing, you know, um, a dog in its forever home or it's a relationship, and it's yep. it's a symbiotic relationship. The dog feeds you and you feed the dog. Yeah, you know, basically love. Awesome. Well, here's to hoping somebody sees this segment and they think, hey, Koa is the dog for me and. Fingers and paws crossed because he does sound amazing from everything that that we've been talking about. And this has been Tracy and Holly with the Limelight Pet Project and we shine the light on harder to adopt pets because their stories are worth telling.